good to see how's it going um, just a quick video to show some recent purchases I've been doing this um, uh, give me 10 1980s and 1970s before that as well so I haven't done too many uh, new finds videos so I've got quite a bit to show but um, so many I can get through in 10 minutes so this is what I'm listening to at the minute Sorry Bamba, Dumali the album is um, obviously it's a Malayan uh, musician uh, quite funky in places uh, recent reissue on Africa 7 don't really know the label too well but uh, yeah this is a really nice record so yeah good stuff I picked up a few um, African records um, Paxton in the VC uh, told me about this label PMG I picked up a few of uh, their, their bits and bobs that they've been putting out um, this is uh, Aleki this is an Afrobeat album from 79, no, 1980. Um, yeah, this is this is lovely. What you'd expect with Afrobeat, it's got those big horns on it, uh, very funky. Yeah, lovely record. This is, I say, this just came out as a reissue. I think an original copy goes for for decent money on Discog. So yeah, cool. Okay. Um, another one on the PMG label. Yeah, I'd say that the. Uh, the Aleki is definitely essential. This, not necessarily as much. It's nice to have, but um, this is a uh, Blow and Phase Four. Uh, it's basically uh, uh, an African boogie album. Uh, yeah, a nice record, nice vocal harmonies and stuff. But um, yeah, not necessarily essential. Just nice to have, really. Right. Okay, I went to a record fair a couple of weeks ago. Um, Pick this up. This is uh, obviously Fella live at the Kalakutu Republic. Um, yeah, this is an original copy. The uh, record out on the Aphrodisia. So this came out in '77. Yeah. Obviously, I'd like to pick up any any original Fella if you can find it, but you don't really come across them that often. But this was a decent price and. Uh, yeah, nice live record. Right, the same fair. I really like Bobby Hutchison. Uh, obviously, he recently passed away, didn't he? But um, so there's been a lot of his stuff shown in the VC. Um, however, saying that, I have never really tried any of his 80s records. Um, with the main reason being that uh, the sleeves on those records are always terrible. Now, I saw this one, this was only a fiver. This is Good Bait from 85 from Landmark Records. This is a lovely record. Yeah, really nice. And this, uh, obviously, I'm obviously very shallow, you know. It's, it's got a decent cover, so I, uh, decent cover art, so I picked it up. But uh, I was up to try some of his other 80s records, but, the, you know, the. The record covers are just so cheesy, you know, it's always put me off, but it's no excuse really, is it? But yeah, Bobby Hutchison. Right, okay. The same fair, I also picked up this, uh, um, the I Can Tina Turner review show. Yeah, this is sort of, a, I think, 64, 65, a live record, as you can see. But um, yeah, this is a really nice record. It's one that I've seen around quite a bit. Um, and I've never really wanted to pay pay the money for it, so uh, I knew the dealer was selling, so it gave me a, a very good price. Um, I love their stuff. they you know, their uh, particularly their late sixties, early seventies stuff. This is a bit earlier than what I'd normally pick up, but yeah, nice record. Okay, I was in Ireland last week um, for a mate's wedding, um, and while I was, I was there for a few days, so I. Uh, I went to Straban, which was about 10 miles away from where I was, um, uh, just to check out some charity shops, and I found a pile of um, punk records for a quid each. Um, first up, uh, Stiff Little Fingers, Stiff Little Fingers, Inflammable Material, a great record. Um, I've never owned it before, so it's only a quid. The, the, the sleeve's a bit, a bit worn and stuff, but I won't take it out of the, uh, the um, sleeve. But um, the, the record's lovely. Um, I say this is a record I used to share a house with with the lad whose uh, who's wedding it was, and uh, he played this album loads, you know, sort of uh, 15 years ago, whatever, 20 years ago when we, when we lived together. And so I've never never owned it myself, so I'm really pleased to pick that up. Actually, the other stuff that I picked up, I picked up the first Clash album, uh, plus Combat Rock as well. Um, a few other bits which I haven't cleaned up or done anything with yet. Irish band, The Outcasts. What's that? Uh, Blood and Thunder from about 82. Um, 
the only alternative compilation stuff on here from uh, what we got well loads of hardcore punk bands I've never heard of so yeah yeah whatever I'll give that a spin might flip it another comp personality crisis stuff like the tube generation X Shem 69 stranglers New York dolls adverts nice comp decent condition Ramones animal boy it's all right not really um yeah okay um right other stuff that I picked up um, this is felt. There's been, I've seen a lot of felt shown in the VC recently, particularly in the, uh, the Give Me Ten 1980s videos. Um, yeah, I think this, this is an eBay purchase. Um, this is Poem of the River from I think '87. One of the ones I didn't have. Nice, lovely record. I, I like Lawrence, the uh, yeah, the main songwriter, the main guy in felt. All the stuff he's done, whether it be felt, denim, or go kart Mo Mozart, always an interesting character. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, this is a lovely record. Okay, um, in the early early 90s, I liked a lot of the acid jazz stuff that was coming out. Uh, this is a record by the James from Taylor Quartet, uh, Get Organized. Yeah, I like that sort of uh, Hammondy, I say acid jazz sounds. I really like James Taylor Quartet, one that I've, I hadn't had previously. Not to everybody's tastes. Um, but yeah, no, good Sunday morning listening, you know, so. Cool. Uh, I mentioned before that uh, a mate of mine opened up a record shop over in Sun Coldfields. Um, at the same time, I, my last new finds video showed uh, the Pesh Mode Violator that I picked up from him. I got this at the same time. This is uh, Temptations 1990. Um, I didn't start doing the uh, Give Me 10 1970s videos until 1974. If I had have started when everybody else did in 1970, um, I would have uh, definitely shown some normal Whitfield productions. Um, this is from 73 on Motown. Um, yeah, so stuff on here. Zoom, obviously a big track on here. I let your hair down and need you heavenly. Yeah, a nice record. Um, yeah, the normal Whitfield productions from this period, whether it be the Temptations or the Undisputed Truth records as well, they're all great. Definitely recommend them. This is one that I hadn't owned before. So yeah, really pleased to pick this so, up. Try and shoot through these, right? Okay. Uh, and this is going back, I don't know, sort of a couple of months now, actually. Um, a few pickups from a, a local record fair again. This is a soundtrack to uh, from the Burglars, uh, Morricone. Um, this was only cheap. Uh, not all of it's to my taste, but there's a um, there's a couple of tracks, particularly the track. Uh, Rodeo, yeah, on the first side, is just a wonderful piece of music that's been played quite a lot over the last few weeks here. Um, but yeah, nice enough copy and good price. Right, just a couple of soul records very quickly. Um, Solomon Burke, We're Almost Home. This is on MGM from 1972. Uh, lovely copy, great sleeve, I think you'll agree. Solomon Burke's a bit of a fun one for me because I love soul music, but I like soul and funk stuff. Um, Solomon Burke, where we, I think he's almost like the Black Elvis, you know, he uh, great voice, but it's almost like nobody really knew what to do with him, you know, so you've got this uh, thing where he's, he's recording a lot, he recorded a lot of, um, particularly in the late 60s, early 70s, a lot of very middle of the road stuff, and this record suffers from that a little bit, but there are some nice tunes on here. Uh, but I say the, the record's in, in great condition, and got some really good price as well, so please with that. Right, and finally, uh, Bobby Womack, BW Goes C and W. I love that sleeve um, with all of the Womack brothers there dressed as cowboys on horseback. Fantastic. Now, as you can see, this is uh, basically Bobby Womack's country and western record. Um, I like this sort of thing where you know you get an artist um, doing something slightly out of their comfort zone. You know, you think about you know, Elvis Costello in the early eighties doing almost blues. It's the same principle, really. Albeit Bobby Womack wasn't necessarily a, a straight soul singer. You know, he did try different styles and play with different things. But yeah, this is a nice record on United Artists. Um, worth listening, listen, worth checking out if only for his, uh, his version of Behind Closed Doors, you know, the Char Charlie Rich song. So, great stuff. I'll have to do another one of these another time. So, cheers. <laughs>